I mean, I'm waiting. Two, one. Hello, everybody of YouTube. Hello. Hola. You're not YouTube. (laughs) We're on the YouTube. (laughs) Welcome to the Catch Finish Podcast, the CFP. Even though the logo on the screen says CFG, I gotta fix that. Um, Yes, you do. Fuck it. Uh, and (laughs) (laughs) this isn't a new concept that I came up with, because I'm a fucking god, which that brings me to, hello everybody, I am King AC the God, your host. I am Gabriel Donovan, the second host. I was getting there. (laughs) And today, (laughs) we are joined by (laughs) our guest, because he's not normally on the podcast, Anderson Hayes, who's out injured. How's your recovery coming along, buddy? I mean, it came along really well. Yeah? <laughs> How well? He doesn't want to talk about it. Cool. All right. Well, I was going to talk about test WWE topics, but my first topic for today is Adam Cole. <laughs> oh, shit. No, that's not my first uh, topic. <laughs> are we going to talk about, like, what happened with him in, in, in that company, Raw? <laughs> what? <laughs> Raw. R-O-H. Raw. Oh, that's... Uh-huh. <laughs> what the uh-huh. fuck? Got him. <laughs> Alright, so the concept for this... this <laughs> I'm getting to the points. Fuck you. The concept for this show is... I'll run down a list of topics weekly. We, this is recorded today is April 7th, 2017. Uh, basically, this will be recorded every Friday. So we can digest our wrestling news all week. And I'll, I will run down talking points. I'm not going to do a lot of the talking, though. Nate and Gabe are gonna share their opinions. I'll share my opinion if I have to, but yeah, they don't want to. They don't want to hear your voice. Yeah, they do. I'm a fucking genius. <laughs> so, yeah, all you want. Shut up. <laughs> let's get right into the first. <laughs> let's get right into the first topic. At WrestleMania 33, the main event was Roman Reigns versus The Undertaker, and on the contrary to popular uh, demands, Roman Reigns won. And at the end of the show. The Undertaker took off his gloves, his hat, and his jacket, left it in the ring, and apparently retired. What are your guys' thoughts on The Undertaker's apparent retirement? Well, first of all, are we going to ignore the fact that Roman Reigns couldn't reverse a tombstone and hit a tombstone on his own? <laughs> yep. We're gonna get, okay. We're going to get we're there gonna, later. If we're ignoring that or not. <laughs> I was actually going to get there later on, but if you want to talk about that, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I don't know. It's sad to see. You know, uh, a guy like Undertaker wrestling for so many years, finally retiring. I don't think it'll be the same, that's for sure. I mean, I thought it was sad watching it, but then, like, after a day had gone by, I kind of just thought, like, you know, he should have retired a few years ago. Yeah. I mean, it would have been fine if he retired when Lesnar beat him. Uh, Nate, what what do you think about the Undertaker's retirement? I was kind of pissed off about it, to tell you the truth. I was waiting for Nate to be like, I loved it. <laughs> I mean, he was so the, sad, it was great. The first time I saw wrestling was yeah. when John Cena freaking beat the crap out of... Of course. Of still lost. Of course it was and John was, Cena. Taker was like the main best, best <laughs> You had to throw that in. He was still lost. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, that, that time, I was like, this guy's going to be one fucking monster. Bro. <laughs> And I was like, what the hell? What just happened when I saw Roman, one of the only guys I know that get pushed hard enough by Vince to retire Undertaker to do that? How would you guys feel if you were in Roman's shoes? I mean, I was going to get to a question like that later, but I guess we'll just talk about that now. I mean, we're going to talk about it now. I mean, Roman Reigns, there's no denying that, like, there's a lot of things he's lacking in terms of being the top guy. And he's not the most popular guy as seen on Raw. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it's not his fault, I don't, per se, because no. he's being put in this position by Vince yeah. and creative. He's just a guy just trying to go out there and do what he's told. He's trying to do his job. So, you know, I can respect that. I, I can't respect his fucking... He's a face who comes out and looks cocky as shit. <laughs> I mean, it's... His promos have never he gotten that on great. Twitter and shits on the fans. Yeah. My major problem with Roman is that he's supposed to be a face, but... But he wants to be a heel. Yeah, he wants to act like a heel. <laughs> I think because he knows. Like, he knows the fans don't like him. He knows that's, the, that's like, the direction they need to go. And they're just not doing it for him. I mean, 
Nate, you're you're a John Cena fan. You've you've obviously seen John Cena as a top face of the company. What are your thoughts on Roman Reigns being pushed as the next John Cena? I mean, I would still give him a shot, but let it happen, you know, on its own instead of freaking create create uh like the writing team pushing him himself themselves. You know, let it happen naturally, like yeah. Daniel Bryan kind of. You're saying, yeah, like how Daniel Bryan became like one of the head guys. Roman was on that path. I mean, he was on that path, but two major points is, one, I think he was pushed at the wrong time, because he was pushed, he, his push started at a time when the fans were demanding Daniel Bryan. Yes, and his push was a year late. And two, they had the chance to start with him fresh when the Shield broke up. Yes. They had the chance to build him up, they had the chance to do whatever, and when, he, when they first broke up, he was over for a bit. The fans, the fans liked him, because he was the silent guy that went out and beat up people, and he wasn't in the main event, per se, but he was a top guy still. And he was being pushed well until he just all of a sudden got injured, came back and feuded with mouth. Lesnar right away and started cutting promos. <laughs> but we'll talk more about Roman later. Next topic I want to talk about. WrestleMania was seven hours total. Oh, start, too start, long. start time was 5 p.m. Eastern time. End time was 12.16 Eastern er, time in the morning. The next night, next day. Um, what are you here? Do you guys believe WrestleMania? I mean, it, it, people, there's arguments that it's a once a year thing, so it being seven hours isn't that too much of a big deal. But there's also guys saying that, I mean, you can have a four hour WrestleMania and still get your point across. What do you guys think? I totally agree. Seven hours is way too long, way too over time. It's because it's by the end of the night, you just feel tired. You don't feel as hyped anymore. You just feel very tired and you want to go to sleep. I shouldn't feel like that after a WrestleMania. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's kind of how I feel after seven hours. I'm I mean, sure if WrestleMania wasn't seven hours this past year, I wouldn't have been as tired after the show or, you know. I mean, us, I uh, us three were at the same house watching WrestleMania together. And the first couple of hours, it was hot. Like, everybody was, oh, yeah. everybody was like, cheering for every match. Even uh, the, the so-so four-way Divas, or, sorry, women's match, even that match got... I mean, it wasn't getting get pops from us, but we were st- like the crowd was still hot for it. We were still hot for the show, and I think yeah. by the time we reached kind of a certain point, the four hour, five hour mark, everyone just kind of just started groaning and wondering. Yeah. Like, I mean, we we were all talking about when's the show gonna end, and there's still five more matches when it's like already ten o'clock at night. Um, how- could you guys imagine watching that alone? Yeah, that would have been <laughs> terrible. <sighs> uh, Nate, what were you gonna say? Like I said, imagine if that Divas match, the SmackDown Divas match, didn't happen. Yeah. I mean, there were rumors. It didn't happen. There were Remember rumors. How, like, almost didn't happen. Yeah, there were rumors going around on Twitter saying that the match was going to get cut. Somehow they still let it go on. And, I mean. I feel like if that stayed on the pre show, yeah. they had more time to do more stuff. But I feel like at the position they were in on the card, they were stuck not to do a lot, and with short time. Well, with so much people. I mean, they were stuck between Lesnar and Goldberg, which is one of the few matches near the end of the show that people were hot for, mm-hmm. and, and, then, and then Taker Roman, which is one of the matches people were not so hot for. Yeah. But I think a 14-match card, that's including the pre-show matches, it's a little, it's a little too much. Um, I get you want to get everybody on the card. That's what there's a battle row for. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um... As great as their feud was, I don't think we needed Ambrose Corbin after what we found out the result was, because if they weren't going to put a title on Corbin, there was no point. No, and then uh, having him win on SmackDown, no time yeah. makes no sense. Yeah, I mean, there were a bunch of matches they could have cut. They didn't have to do the SmackDown women's match, or they could have just put that on pre-show. They didn't have to do Corbin Ambrose as hot as the feud was. The Battle Royale was pretty pointless. And I we mean, were looking forward to that match, too. Yeah, and this, this didn't click, I don't think. Yeah, but one it of was the... a good match, but it wasn't the best. They're, they showed that they could do better on SmackDown. Yeah. Uh, keeping keeping better. with the show being hot near the beginning, uh, one of the hottest points of the night, uh, triple threat ladder match for the tag team titles on Raw. Luke Gallows, Carl Anderson versus Cesaro and Sheamus versus Enzo and Cass. The New Day come out. It looks like they're about to announce that they're going to be in the match. And out comes Jeff and Matt Hardy. And they actually win the Raw tag team titles, and they won on Monday Night Raw to retain the titles. Uh, what are you guys' thoughts on the Hardy Boys' sudden appearance at WrestleMania? The video of us crying 
because of the Hardy's <laughs> back, I think explains it all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Online of us basically crying because the Hardy boys are out. Um, I mean, you know I, me, I was kind of, I was kind of am about it. That's, that's what I was about to say. I, I, there's a few moments on stream the past couple weeks where we've talked about the potential of the Hardy boys coming and you were pretty skeptical about it. Yes. So, I mean, this question goes towards you more so what your thoughts on it. I'll get to Nate in a second, but uh, continue what you were saying. I, I just didn't know how they were going to go about it. Uh-huh. I was scared about how they were going to go about it. You know what I mean? Just have them Are you... show up for no reason. But where they did it and how they did it made me excited. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So Nate. I'm excited to see where they go. Nate? Dude, you know me. I was talking about <laughs> Jeff and Matt being back in WWE for a long time. I mean, yeah. You've you you, you you've been one you've been one of the guys that have always been telling me that you can't wait till Jeff Hardy comes back. Which, Shoot, I mean, look what happened. I mean, same. I mean, I was always a big Jeff Hardy fan, even in TNA. Um, mm-hmm. But, yeah, so, Nate, what did you think about how they came back? Oh, I fucking loved it, man. <laughs> <laughs> that says it for every that's wrestling. No, that's, that no, that's, that's, that's enough said. Um, next que- it, the next question I want to ask you guys, because it's not much we can really say about the return. What are your guys' thoughts on them dropping, well, seemingly dropping the Broken Hardy universe gimmick? I know why they're doing it, mm-hmm. but it is kind of disappointing. I just hope they don't go back to boring Matt Hardy. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Of having Jeff just be the spotlight, you know, instead of having both of them do their own thing. Kind of like Matt was, like, funny on the mic, but Jeff in the ring was obviously better. Mm-hmm. So it kind of made both of them shine. I just hope it doesn't go back to Jeff just being the one guy everybody focuses on and Matt just being the background guy again. Mm. That's the only thing I'm skeptical about still. Nate? Nate? Man, they should just keep the freaking broken gimmick. Yeah. And and Cause honestly... Because like, like how Gabe just said, like, before then, it was just Jeff being, like, the main guy out of both of them. I mean, yeah. I, I, I think the only time Matt was ever really over in WWE was when he was feuding with Edge. And, and I'd say also when he turned heel for a bit, when he wore, like, yeah. the tights and everything. Yeah. Oh, well, he was over at first, but it kind of got a little stale. He died. Because he died out. I, I don't think he had really the ability to play that type of heel character yeah like that serious yeah but yeah he also showed with the broken character is he could play a character who's heel but also has face tendencies which yeah. is something a lot of people can't really do they, a lot of people can't really get heel gimmicks over this day and age and it's something that's really lacking in wrestling um like you said i mean it's understandable that they can't do it because the tna lawsuit Mm-hmm. but it's a little disappointing because it's kind of the reason we all wanted them back in WWE. We also got to think, like, TNA, you really going to try to go against WWE's lawyers on this? They would. They've done it before. Like, Idiot. but on something that you know you're going to lose? Like, you know what I mean? Because it's yeah. obvious TNA well, didn't make the Broken Hardys. It's, it's, you know, I think in their mind it's worth taking the chance, even though they wouldn't, I, I doubt they would ever win that lawsuit. Yeah, it was the only team that actually made them money. That's why yeah. they're shooting for it. Yeah, mm-hmm. so they can have the rights to the broken gimmick, and that WWE will be able to get more money off of their yeah. so-called yeah. idea they just, had. Because just imagine the money they're gonna make off of delete shirts and obsolete shirts and all <laughs> I, that. I I still think they still will eventually. Oh oh yeah. Once I think when once this all out, yeah once this all passes over, they're going to make millions off of this character. Oh, jeez. I mean, I, I talking about. Matt Hardy's broken Maxel. character. <laughs> <laughs> sign, sign, Maxwell, Revy, Benjamin, Vanguard <laughs> One. <laughs> or did I say that wrong again? Delapitated. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, I think eventually it'll come back. Um, because yeah. he said in the tweet he was like, "If it can, can." He always said, "If it can be contained." Yeah. So I think eventually. That well, kind of hint, like, one of the other things is two days ago he took the broken hashtag broken out of his Twitter name. And this morning, he put it back in his Twitter name. So yeah. that's another thing a lot of people are speculating. Maybe WWE can do it now. Um, I mean, it'll eventually happen. You can find loopholes around that gimmick, too. They yeah. You don't have to call them broken. They can, just, they can still do the broken thing. Call them the obsolete brothers. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, like, find, like, loopholes around it. But you can get around that for sure without yeah. saying the broken hardies. You can have them still do the shit they do. Because that, like, how they act isn't owned by TNA, that's for sure. Yeah. So it's like, there's no pro reason about that. It'll, it'll die down. Well, while we're talking about the Raw Tag Team Champions, let's jump over to the post-Mania Raw on Monday night. What were your favorite 
crowd chants that night. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> that was the best chant. I, I liked it because he wasn't even talking yet. <laughs> I know, it was great. It was it was great. They were saying at the Roman and he was he, he, you could tell even he was kinda loving it. He was like, oh, okay. Oh uh, he he loved the whole segment. Yeah. He was smiling the whole thing. I, I respect that. Like I I like that about him that he's like, alright, cool. Like he's kind of accepting it now. Nate, what was your favorite chant on Raw? <laughs> same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was a lot of people's favorites. Well, I would say the same thing. I'm gonna go a little different. Okay. My favorite chant was the crowd singing the WrestleMania theme song to the tune of Samoa Joe. Nate, did you know about this? No. In the main, in the main event of Monday Night Raw, it was obviously Finn Balor and uh, Seth Rollins with Joe and Owens. The crowd started chanting. Uh, you know the theme song. It was like, um, oh, 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 we, oh, we, oh, we. The crowd, the crowd starts going, Joe, Joe, Joe. <laughs> Joey, 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 Joey. Oh, that's Joey. what they were saying that Samoa night? Yeah. Joe. Oh, shit. Now that makes sense. Because I'm wondering what the fuck they were saying. And then <laughs> another chant that I think will catch on that Gabe fucking despises. Um, yeah, the cr- crowd the the crowd, was singing the Congo to the tune of Seamus and Sorrow. Yes. But the reason yeah. the reason I don't think you found it uh, uh, pleasing is that I don't think the crowd was... Deep into it, I don't think, and also, like also, you didn't get what it was until I told you it a few days later. Yeah, I think at the moment, if it was more clear, I would have liked it. But like, I, I think if I it like chance when I understand it, if, I'm like, oh, if it's that's great, if it sticks and if it goes for a few more weeks, I think you might like it. I think it'll grow on me. I'm just not a, as you know, I'm not a huge fan of that team. Yeah, well, so it's not one of the topics. But while we're talking about them, Shares and Cesaro. Obviously, it's not a position everyone wants Cesaro to be in. Yeah. Um, we'll get to the superstar shakeup thing a little later. <laughs> but um, I know what your answer is going to be already. I don't know what Nate's answer is going to be. But going into this coming up uh, superstar trade deadline, so to speak, and 2017 as a whole, with how over they are getting, would you keep Sheamus and Cesaro together as a team? I feel like if, the, if a majority of the fans, not me personally, but I know a lot of people are behind them, I would say keep them together because you do have people that are fans of them. Mm-hmm. It obviously would be smart too. Yeah. So I, I would say, yeah, to put to keep them together. Nate? But. I would keep them together because they work well together, one, and you see some like some fans are really into that tag team. I mean, I, I personally, I'm a big fan of the team. Yeah. Like how back then, like, remember how they were like um, very dysfunctional, and now when it got to when it kept going towards mania, they became best of friends. Yeah, like, I mean that. I can see why people are fans of them. It's just like I don't know. There's just something in me that's like not clicking. That's kind of like you know yeah. what I mean. It's just I don't know. And maybe because like over time, I got like kind of stale with Sheamus. So like anything with Sheamus kind of got left a bad taste in my mouth. Mm-hmm. But that's like me personally. Like I don't know something with something with Sheamus. Like that just I loved Sheamus. Trust me, I still have a Sheamus action figure in the box because I was a huge <laughs> Sheamus fan. But it's just like over time, like something just it like it just I don't know. Was, I think it was his face turn. It just since then his first face turn. Yeah, it's been kind of sour taste in my mouth. I mean, Sheamus. I mean, me personally, I think they should stay together. Uh, one, I'm actually a fan of the team. I like their style. I like how they work to- well together, and I like. Oh no, they work great. Together. I I like the. The fact that they've been able to come up with all these like tag team maneuvers that based around their signature spots. Mm-hmm. Also, uh, they are they have been moving merchandise as a team, not as much as like your New Days and Roman Reigns's and John Cena's, but they're they're moving they're moving a decent deal of of merchandise with their T shirts and stuff. So uh, I think as long as the crowd's behind them, I think they should stay together. Um. um. I don't know how long they are gonna stay together for, but <laughs> quick thing on merchandise, real quick. How long do you guys think it's gonna take? How many, I say, minutes or hours do you think it'll take for the hardest to be the best selling stuff on the shop when their merch when their merch goes up? Two minutes, <sighs> not even thirty seconds. <laughs> you Honestly, know, I can see it in a couple seconds. It'll <laughs> selling. They'll, it. they'll be a top three merchandise mover. Because you know we're going to get armbands. They'll, they'll, get Matt Hardy wigs. If they start selling Matt Hardy wigs, I'm buying one with the white streak. I, I, think, I think the only guys that would stay above them would be Cena and Roman. Yeah. And maybe New Day. But 
other than them, I Dari's are going to be probably top three merchandise mover. Yeah, for them. But um, moving along from tag teams because I think we talked enough about the Raw's tag teams. Uh, oh, let's... by the way, I do like how they're emphasizing on tag teams, though. I really like that. Yeah. I love well, that. that's something that Raw has kind of picked up on, but SmackDown. We'll talk about this a little. Lost. We'll talk about this a little later when we get to talking about SmackDown. But we're still we're still talking on the Raw stuff. Let's talk about your boy Bork Laser. Brock Lesnar is the new Universal Champion at defeating Goldberg yeah. at WrestleMania in an actually pretty decent match. Uh, all finishers. I'll, I'll give my thoughts on the match in a moment, but what are your guys' thoughts on Brock Lesnar as Universal Champion, and where do you think it goes from here? I just don't think any part-timer should hold titles. Mm-hmm. Any title, not even like a US or IC title. Mm-hmm. I feel like they're just they should just be there to draw money for non-title matches. I agree. But um, for for at least Brock will show up, and he'll actually wrestle maybe. So that kind of gives me hope because he's been doing it more well recently. To to kind of give you a little perspective, he's not booked for any more Raws in April, and he's not booked for Payback. Well, fuck. Well, so <laughs> you might wanna might wanna not say he's gonna wrestle more. <laughs> so I will take everything I just said back. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Nate, you rest my case of that they shouldn't hold titles. Nate, what are your thoughts on Brock Lesnar as Universal Champion? Boy. <laughs> Boy, you better stop. That's it? <laughs> Boy, Boy, no. Okay, just like Gabe said, any part-timer that has a title shot should not have it at all. Because I feel like a title what? should be something you earn, you work for, not something just you get because you're a name. I mean, ever yeah. since Universal title came out, it's been nothing but a goddamn joke. Remember how, first Daniel Bryan, off, remember how Daniel Bryan said at the beginning of SmackDown when it became live at first that the WWE oh, World Heavyweight Championship it. still had meaning. <laughs> when that they were shitting on the Universal. <laughs> that it still wasn't, it wasn't as like crappy as it is now with the Universal. They were off to a great start with Finn. And I think him getting injured fucked up everything they had for future booking. I mean, now look yeah. That, I mean, so they went with what they knew. But I, I mean, now, it wouldn't Brock and Finn have to face off for the title since Finn's the first one back in line? It make it that make that make a lot of sense, but logic, logic, logic's yeah. not a thing in WWE. No, he will probably have to earn it or something. I forgot about up. that. Yeah, WWE is the same. I mean, I mean, we go through the lineage of the title. So far, there, it's had four championship holders, and in less than a year, in all of them, it's been Finn Balor, Kevin Owens, Bill Goldberg, and Brock Lesnar. Yeah. Now, I can get why they would want Brock Lesnar to have it, because it's a name, and it'll draw money, and he'll get pay-per-view buys when he's on pay-per-view. I just don't like that he's not booked for the B pay-per-views like Payback, because yeah. if you're the champion, you should be competing at least at every pay-per-view. Like, you don't need to compete on Monday Night Raws. You maybe show up for like one or two Raws a month. It's Brock Lesnar. He has Brock Lesnar money. He can do whatever the fuck he wants. But that's not the point. The point is, if you're the champion, you should you as a company should be booking this guy to compete at pay-per-views and not book him uh, at dark matches on the road to WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. And I understand that completely. I'm just saying, like, doesn't Brock Lesnar have some sort of control on what he does? I think so. He has it a control. Yeah, he, ha- he has a control of how many days he works. See, look, so that's all his fucking fault. But really. it, Brock just doesn't care. He but, just wants wherever money is. Yeah, which, is, which sucks. But I think it's dumb on WWE because he has oh, yeah. he has however many days that he's booked for. Need it be dark? need it be like sixty to eighty, however however many events he has to work in a year. Put him on a house show in Maryland. Yeah, he between January and April, he has probably appeared on more house shows and dark matches than he has TV. Mm-hmm. And like, it's not like he's not at the arena for TV because he's in the dark matches. There have been shows where Goldberg has been on it, or there has just been like a video hyping the match between him and Goldberg, and none of them appeared live until after the show ended, where he squashed the big show. And I, I don't think that's what they should be having their main champion be. Mm-hmm. But I mean. To Brock and to Vince, it's all about the money and drawing power. So then, what is going to headline payback? Then is it going to be the U.S. title match or we'll, like Raw we'll, versus Roman we'll, number one contenders match? We'll get to our predictions no, like later, but I'm assuming I'm assuming it's going to be Braun versus Roman in a number one contenders match. I feel I feel like they did Braun and Roman's feud way too early because mm-hmm. that hurt Braun. Yeah, 
still affecting him. Like, how are you going to have Braun come out and face Brock but not hit him? He's done that with everybody. He's done it with Taker, yeah. with Roman, Goldberg. Brock, and li- like, like the crowd said, it's, it's characters are like a pussy. Yeah, and we love Braun. And yeah. And don't like what they're doing. Braun, right Braun is one of my top five favorite guys right now on the main roster. And he's my most improved wrestler from last year. And, and you guys more than anybody, I hate big guys. Yeah. This is the first big guy I'm getting behind, and they're fucking it up. And yeah. a bunch of people are getting behind for the first time in, what, since Brock Lesnar? Like, people are getting behind him. Yeah. Uh, they're this not is, doing anything. This is their chance to really capitalize and make a big star, and they're kind of screwing the pooch here. Like my, like, like my brother Drew said, imagine if what they did at Mania, you just took out Roman and put Braun. Like, remember when Roman stepped on the chair as Taker was trying to grab for it? Yep. Imagine if that was Braun, it, how much more it, that would have felt. At least it lo- would have looked more legit. real, legit with Braun. And I think Braun would have been able to pick him up for the tombstone. <laughs> yeah, and he would, yeah, yeah. And he would have benefited more from it, from winning. Yeah. He, w- he looks like the new guy who runs this yard. He could he looks like that guy. Yeah. Roman does. But. Well, let's get away from talking about Raw for a few minutes because it's getting us a little heated here. Uh, hey, let's let's, got, let's, mad. My blood let's, let's I, I got a question. I got one question about Raw. Yes. Okay, you know how Raw talk happened, right? Yeah. Yeah. And um fucking uh Goldberg came on over. Well, we're we're gonna get to that. That's Let's, oh, what happened? Let, let's oh. let's let's save that. I, that's coming up in a few minutes. All right. All um, right. my next topic I want to talk about. Uh, there are rumors that WWE Network will be getting an upgrade where you can now pay, I believe it's thirteen or fifteen dollars a month, and you will receive potentially. Uh, we will be getting independent wrestling on the network, and that includes ICW and various other uh, companies that WWE partnered with. I'm assuming Evolve in Universe. <laughs> I'm assuming Evolve would probably be a part of that. Um, but what are your? Would you guys pay more money to have independent wrestling on the network? Oh yeah, you can have all my money. Nate, not twenty dollars, but like that's my limit. <laughs> <laughs> but if it's like fifteen, yeah, Nate for sure. I mean, yeah, I would spend more money for or, um to be able to see independent wrestling, mm-hmm. especially I- for people who haven't been like introduced really to like big indie companies. Yeah. I think this is a great way to introduce them to it if they have the network. It's like me. It, 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 it's, so it's their chance to kind of see the guys that are like coming up. Because there are people who legit didn't know who Finn Balor was when he first came. Yeah. And, and there are people see Pete Dunne and like, who the fuck is this guy? Yeah. So and Tyler Bate, like, who is this kid? I th- I think it's a good idea too. Um, I I would probably be willing to dish out fifteen a month, but no problem. It's not confirmed. This is. Not official yet, by any means. I, I always wonder something. I know WWE has, like, their YouTube channel or whatever, but, like, they want to bring, like, all of this bunch of different things to the network. Would you guys honestly watch if, like, Dank Ops was on the network? If like, what? if he had a show on the, uh, uh, Dank Ops, he does, yeah. like, 2K videos. Would you guys watch his stuff on the network? I feel like I would. It depends. Like, if it, mm. if it was, like, a show of him and Xavier Woods playing video games, yeah. Yeah, I would I would watch that. Or if they brought Up, Up, Down, Down to the network. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I would definitely watch that. Yeah. I would watch that. I, I, would, I would... If that was, like, in, like, a package like that, I'd, I'd, I'd watch that. Even though I could watch it for free on YouTube, but if it's on the network, all in one spot, I could watch ICW and then watch Up, Up, Down, Down. Yeah, I'd watch it. And then watch maybe, like, WCW. Yeah. Sounds like a good Saturday. <laughs> I mean, I think even with just the independent wrestling being added, there's a huge variety on the network. I mean, this month, this past month alone, they've added uh, like early like NXT, NXT, like not the rally show, but early like 2012. yeah, like 2012 NXT. They've added Mid South Wrestling. They've added uh, fucking the talk show they oh, used they to added do. Mid South. They added they added Mid South. They added the talk no. show. I believe it was called Thursday Night Titans or something like that. But. I mean, the network alone, even without the independent shows right now, it still has a huge variety. And I think anybody, like, I know they've used to overplay the whole nine ninety nine thing, but it's a great deal for what you're getting on the network. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You get more than what you're paying for. Yeah. Uh, That's why I, I bought the network with no hesitation. Same. Uh, let's move along. Uh, speaking of the network, uh, what, out of every single show that WWE put on this weekend, from NXT TakeOver Orlando to WrestleMania to Raw to SmackDown to this week's NXT, what was the match of the weekend? Mm, match of the weekend. For WWE? I'll give mine, yeah, I'll give mine right now. 
I think it was a, a DIY versus Revival versus Authors of Pain. I thought that was the best match of the entire weekend. Really? I haven't watched that part of NXT or of the pay, or of TakeOver yet. Mm-hmm. I have to watch that first half. I, out, um, of, out of everything they put on this week, I think that was probably the best match. I like the latter match with the Hardys. Mm-hmm. That was fun to watch. It was fun. It was short and sweet, but it was fun. Yeah, it was fun. And I like wrestling matches that are fun. Yeah. So I enjoyed that match this weekend. Nate. Nate. Oh, you guys are going to hate me for this one. Oh, boy. <laughs> if you say Nikki and John. That's, that's what I'm thinking he's going to say. Oh, wow. You guys got me not so figured out. <laughs> you sure? It was the... Uh, I need to Andre Giant battle. What? Battle shut, the f- shut the fuck up! <laughs> shut the fuck up! <laughs> Damn it, Nate. Dude, <laughs> one job. I enjoyed it. Because what? that's what made you win in the league. Fuck. No, not even that. <laughs> like, it had, like, a lot of people that I haven't seen uh, on TV. <laughs> that's, for a while. that's the point. One. They don't deserve to be on TV. <laughs> it did have some, like, shocking moments. And it did have us at the edge of our seat hoping Sammy would win. <laughs> and then he got eliminated by Killian. Like, the fuck? We did have our celebrity moment in that. <sighs> well, that's a odd mix of matches of the weekend. Controversial pick by Nate. <laughs> um, moving along here in my list of topics. Either way, I love it. <laughs> I love how he knew he was like, going to hate me. <laughs> um, it's been revealed. You, you guys actually thought I was going to say Nick, uh, Nick yes. and Cena? For yes, yeah, we Abs- were say absolutely. That. No, um, I have a lot of during that proposal. Did you cry during that proposal? <laughs> that what? Did you cry during that proposal? Did you wish that was you? <laughs> Who should say yes to? I couldn't see anybody. All right, <laughs> moving uh, moving along. Uh, it's it's been revealed that the WWE has signed Jim Ross to a two year contract, and he revealed yes. the reason he signed it is because he's willing to do anything for the WWE team, whether it be commenting NXT, the UK show, whatever, because he needs this to. Kind of get the death of his wife off his mind a little bit. Um, Dude, and I would love him on the UK show. But I interrupt you, but it's I would all love it, him on the UK show. Yeah. It's also been revealed that the reason they signed Jim Ross was not because of his wife's death, but because um, a UK company, um, I believe the World of Wrestling Company, were going to sign him for a deal. They didn't want, they didn't want Jim Ross to sign, uh, and Jim Ross chose WWE because they're willing to offer two years while... Uh, the other company was only willing to offer ten weeks. Uh, what are your guys? What? what are your guys' thoughts on Jim Ross coming back to WWE, even if it's not a full time role? I am excited as all hell to see Jim Ross back. It's not. Nice, it's nice too because it's a happy ending for what's been going on within the could, past couple months. Could you imagine him and Michael Cole on the UK TV show, knowing how good Michael Cole was on that show? Imagine uh, that, them calling that show. That, that'd be great. Them two and Nigel McGuinness, maybe. That would be awesome. I would love that. Uh, Nate, That'd what's Nate? What's your thoughts on Jim Ross coming back to the WWE? I fucking love it, man. <laughs> <laughs> I want that on a shirt with Nate's face. I fucking, I fucking love, love it. it. <laughs> um, well, a little more bit of news that's come out now. Take this with a grain of salt because it's it's uh, Dave Meltzer, and anything Dave Meltzer says is not one hundred percent. But <laughs> according to some people, he's wrestling god. But <laughs> uh, <laughs> according according to rumors, uh, Moro Ronaldo may be on his way out of the WWE. Uh, apparently, his battle of depression as of late is due to backstage bullying by JBL. It's been revealed that JBL has been a bully to numerous people backstage, uh, keeping up with his old school persona from back in the day. Uh, apparently, JBL's apparently JBL's bullying pushed Moro to the brink of depression, and Moro is a, reportedly possibly on his way out of the WWE. And apparently, uh, Jim Ross, now that he's back. It is being rumored that they they will either go along with a three man team with JBL Otunga and Tom Phillips, or Jim Ross will be brought in as more Ronaldo's replacement. What are your guys' thoughts on this? Send JR to SmackDown, but I, I'm gonna miss Morrow, man. I love Morrow. I feel bad if if what's true Send of JBL JR to SmackDown and take David Otunga off of commentating. I, I agree. Yeah, <laughs> good job. Yeah, but you, you gotta kind of I mean, you gotta no, feel bad. Done. Like he seems so uninterested inside a goddamn show. And wow. he's been messing up too. Like, it, no, just get the fuck off. <laughs> Nobody wants you on TV anymore. Yeah. Famous for your wife. I think everybody thinks that. Um, you gotta feel bad for Moro Ranallo if what's being rumored is true. Yeah. Um, according to JBL, he tweeted. Someone asked him, uh, "Are you gonna respond to these rumors?" And he said, "No, because the internet doesn't deserve my response." But I wish the best for Moro Ranallo. 
JBL still being a dickhead, does that surprise you? And what are your thoughts on the situation of Moro Ronaldo? Hell no, he's probably still like touching the dudes in the shower like he used to. I don't <laughs> doubt it. He used to, <laughs> Nate, you know he used to do that, right? Oh shit! Touched yeah. edge. He, he touched Orton, edge. Orton used to do stuff like that too. He touched edge in the shower. Yeah, and Orton fucked somebody's boot. And shit in someone's bag. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> what? Like, dude, it's fucked up backstage, that. dude. There's like, there's sex backstage. There's shitting in bags. There's <laughs> fucking boots. There's touching in the shower. It's weird. It's weird. <laughs> okay, backstage. I, I did not know about the shit in the bag. Let's not talk about that. It's conversation <laughs> for another day. No, but no. If it, it it's ridiculous, and I don't know, I don't get the point of this hazing thing that JBL does. I don't understand. <laughs> especially when, Honestly, especially when happen. the guy you're hazing is an announcer. Yeah, he's not even a wrestler. And it's, this like, is this isn't the first announcer that's had problems because this this week, um, Justin Roberts came out and said that he was bullied by JBL, and then JBL yeah. JBL's response to that was everyone fucking hated Justin Roberts. <laughs> <laughs> I believe wasn't Joey Styles have problems? Did At, he punch JBL? Yeah, oh. Joey Styles punched JBL back in like 2005. Yeah, JBL's trying to fuck with him. He's fucking with him and Blue Meanie. It's fucking retarded. Oh my god, that's, <laughs> that's a whole that's a whole podcast episode. But all right, yeah, that he needs to he needs to cut he needs to cut that out. Or Vince needs to really be like, dude, it's not the 90s and 2000s anymore. We gotta cut that shit out. Well, well, speaking of Vince, there is news on that. Apparently, WWE just does not see the JBL situation as something that would affect the the WWE brand as a whole. So they are not going to reprimand JBL whatsoever. It's ridiculous. What? Which is a little ridiculous considering a guy named Bill DeMott kind of did the same thing two years ago and got released. I mean, if this is really a problem with multiple announcers, I mean, as much of a legend as JBL is, I don't think a guy like that should be on your roster long term. If you get knocked out by Joy Styles, you shouldn't be in the company. That's, like, <laughs> that's, that's the main point. All right. Well, moving along, speaking of dickheads, the new Raw general manager is ha- <laughs> his head looks like a dick well, all right whatever Uh-oh. uh speak the new raw general manager is kurt angle who was yeah. inducted, who was inducted into the hall of fame this past uh, friday uh what are your guys thoughts on kurt angle as general manager of raw i'm excited for 2k18 <laughs> oh hell yeah <laughs> like honestly that's it that's that's your only thought on kurt angle being gm <laughs> oh no i was waiting for nate to say something i mean i'm excited to see what the hell is gonna happen if it's going to be different than how Nick is doing it. I just don't want to see any more of the Stephanie bullying the managers anymore. I'm so tired of that. I feel, like, so I feel like if any character is going to stop that, it's Kurt Angle. I hope he suplexes her. It'll be, like, it'll be kind of cool, though, because him and Stephanie have the dynamic from before, though, because they've had storylines before in the past where they worked together. Yeah. So they I think a, I think it makes sense that he's the GM of Raw, and it makes sense that he'll be with Stephanie, and I think it'll be entertaining. Yeah. I'm... I'm I'm excited to see where it goes, mm-hmm. but we'll see. We'll see. Nate, you got anything? No. <laughs> well, then we'll move on to the next topic. Uh, <laughs> he said next, no. next, it's been revealed that next Monday on Raw and next Tuesday on SmackDown, um, they will they will both be special superstar shakeup editions of the show, where Ooh, Raw gen- where Raw general manager Kurt Angle and SmackDown general manager Dan O'Brien will conduct trades. That will affect the landscape of both Raw and SmackDown. Now, there are rumors of who is moving along. And as of the most recent rumors, there are rumors that Raw will possibly be receiving uh, Alexa Bliss and possibly AJ Styles. Um, But it's also been revealed that now the thought is the club might be going to SmackDown and AJ will stay there with them. It's also been revealed that New Day may possibly go on to SmackDown. What are your guys' thoughts on the superstar shakeup, and what do you think of the moves are going to be? So, if any of those so, happen? Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, ever since the debut that happened this weekend of Shinsuke, is that actually going to happen between um, AJ and him? It'd be great if that match actually happened. I, I mean, think Shinsuke going to SmackDown was kind of like this is going to be the new guy yeah. on SmackDown kind of thing. Like, no, like, this is going to be the new guy. Well, you know, AJ won't be here. It, I can see that happening. It's also been talked about that the reason Shinsuke was brought up is because John Cena's leaving, and they need someone to sell tickets, and they think Shinsuke could be the guy to take Cena's spot. But it's also it's also a little yeah. odd 
that they did this whole segment where AJ came out and presumably turned face to look like, and he said that he wants to stay on SmackDown because he's the face of SmackDown. I, mm, it's kind of a red herring that he's probably going to go to Raw. Sadly. Um, but it is cool going to have him and Joe on the same roster. And yeah. Joe's a heel, and if he's a face... Oh boy! I hope we get a raw match of Joe and Styles. It, it also it also makes sense because if he is turning face, then that feud would make sense. And also, the Clubber heals, and then Finn Balor is also on Raw. So there's potential that maybe Balor could turn heel, and they could do the AJ Balor feud that they've always wanted to do. I mean, it, it makes sense. The pieces are lining up. It makes them. sense for AJ to go to Raw. Um, they're saying that if AJ does go to Raw, a guy like Seth Rollins is probably going to go to SmackDown to kind of fill the big star void. Um, I, I'd assume if AJ comes to Raw, um, I'd assume either Owens or Rollins would go to SmackDown. I don't... I can see a title swap. I feel like there's going to be a title swap with the IC and US. Possibly. And I, I really don't think Roman Reigns is going to go to SmackDown as much as people have talked about it. Andrew told me something. He's like, how crazy would it be if the Usos go to uh, Raw and the Hardys go to SmackDown and they have to swap belts. It's possible. Ooh. That'd but be cool. It'd be different. That'd I, be cool. I also thought that because they've they've on screen talk about the Hardys um, hunt for all the titles in the world. <clears throat> and I, I had a prediction that maybe the Hardys are still the Raw tag champions, but they get drafted to SmackDown and they hold both tag titles. Mm-hmm. And that would be interesting with Cesaro and Sheamus training for the Hardys and they're stuck with... The Usos, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like throws them so, off their game. Mm-hmm. So unified tag champions. I, I wouldn't no, no, say I wouldn't no, say no. unified. They'll, no, no, they'll swap titles. So like the Usos will go to Raw and Hardys will go to SmackDown, and they just they're still champions, but for the other brand. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So they're still champions because they obviously earn the titles, but they'll just be champions on different brands. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah. would be something cool. It'd be something different. Mm-hmm. You haven't seen that really well, happen like that before. I guess while we're talking about. Uh, the tag team scene in WWE. Uh, mm-hmm. we'll, we'll move along here. Let's talk about one of the teams that debuted this week on WWE television. Uh, Monday Night Raw, the New Day came out and had an open challenge. And who I came out? The New Day debuted. <laughs> and who came out? Uh, Scott Dawson and Das Wilder, the Revival. My Hi. my favorite tag team in the world oh, right yeah, now. Uh, They're amazing. What are your guys' thoughts on the Revival debuting and being on Monday Night Raw? Austin. You and I have been fans of the revival for how long now? <laughs> Years. And the fact that now people are behind the revival is awesome. Yeah. I'm loving that everybody's loving the revival. I think even Nate likes the revival. Right, Nate? Yeah. So it's like yeah. it's cool seeing everybody like the revival now and it's finally getting their shot. Like So we all so we all like the we all like the revival. Do we like them being on Monday Night Raw? Yeah. Yeah. Uh now that the tag team division and Raw started to become a, a focal point, yeah. I would love to see the Hardys versus the Revival and the, Revi- and the Revival take the belts off them. Nate? I would say they would do better in SmackDown. I think... Really? I think... I can see your point because I think it'd be a big boost to the SmackDown tag division. But I think that's... Them being on Raw all of a sudden, I think that shows the point of the trades happening next week because I do think other tag teams from Raw will go to SmackDown. I mean, like I said, the New Day is looking like it, they're most likely going to go to SmackDown. They have nothing else left to do on Raw. But I I also think that with the way the SmackDown tag division is right now, the only team the Revival will really have good chemistry with that we know is American Alpha. And SmackDown's tag team division is not looking that great. Um, the Vaude Villains are no more, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, fun. Brizongo aren't getting pushed. Uh, Ascension, look like they're getting a push, but all of a sudden that's over, and it really is just a two-team show over there with the revival, or sorry, um, Alpha and the Usos. So, I think the revival going to Raw at that moment was a good idea. Mm-hmm. I, can, I do feel like on SmackDown they will have more ability to more, be top guys. Yeah, and their matches could be maybe a bit better with like guys like Alpha, who they had an amazing match with. Yeah, and I believe with the Usos they would put on a good match, and even with the even with Ascension, like if Ascension weren't heels, but you know what I mean? Like, I feel like they mm. put on, with the NXT teams, they put on good matches. And I feel like now SmackDown has that empty team void, which they need to be filled, which I guess would be um, the club, like you said. Now it kind of solidifies that, I'm guessing, maybe, hopefully. It's, I mean, I, I, I'd assume it's going to be the club or the new, new Day. 
the, or the, both. The, the early 2000 fan in me really wants Ryder to come back as a heel and join with Hawkins again. It's possible <laughs> oh. too, though. Because they're already, we'll talk, we'll talk about it later on Mojo, but they're already hinting at Mojo breaking off from Ryder. So hopefully. Well, well actually, Mojo Raleigh, Mojo Raleigh actually isn't one of the topics. So if you want to talk about this right now, okay. uh, Mojo Raleigh, as we know, he won the Andre the yeah. Giant Battle Royal. So it looks like Mojo's on par to get kind of a singles push, possibly. Yeah, um, they said on SmackDown that he's dropped the dead weight of Zack Ryder and he's moved yeah. on. Yeah, and you know, which as, mu- as much hate as we've given Mojo lately, I can see why fans are getting behind him. And mm-hmm. I'm not totally against him kind of getting like an intercontinental title push, possibly. Mm-hmm. But I can also see the seeds being built for the hype bros not being a thing. Yeah. So, who knows? Maybe Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins will actually be a team. Kurt Hawkins it's, isn't going to do anything else in the main roster, so you might as well. If SmackDown wanted to build their tag teams, Andrew had a great idea. I'm going to tell you guys. Andrew was like, what if Hawkins was like, became like, not like the next edge, but was kind of like, had his own, he had his own head, um, what I keep saying heads, his own edge heads mm-hmm. in Blake and Murphy on SmackDown, and he's kind of like the ringmaster of Murphy and Blake, which become his kind of lackeys, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And fill that void in the tag team division, kind of like how they did for Edge. He wouldn't be like yeah. winning world titles, obviously, but they'd be helping him win matches, maybe an icy title, you know what I mean? And then make them look good. Yeah. And maybe eventually break them off from him and have them do their thing as a team. I just never, yeah. I just think Blake and Murphy should never been split up. I mean, but if they, I could see that, that would have been a cool in, thing. In, in my opinion, I don't think they're ever going to be behind pushing Kurt Hawkins. I think he was 100% brought in to be an enhancement talent. Above it's anything sucks, else, I love it, it sucks because he has a lot of potential. I think, like Zack Ryder, because he's not—he's not an old guy. He's—he's he's no. been wrestling for a long time, but he's only in his thirties. Him and Zack are only in their thirties right now. Yeah, so they're not—they're not, they're not that old. And then last year, it showed that Zack Ryder could still be over. And you saw him now. That dude looks like a world champ, Zack Ryder. Dude, he's—he's he, he's ripped. Like he's huge. while he's been out injured, he's really poked himself up. He looks like a dude that could hold a world title. He looks like a, a top star, like, just by his look. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, he has that look, like, that look Vince loves, that big muscle-bound guy. Oh, yeah. But, Zack Ryder, <laughs> yeah. Falls off the chair. And, but no, like... Starts Mojo, rubbing, just, rubbing his fist. <laughs> I, I could see why people like Mojo, like, seeing him live at NXT, seeing the hype bros, I was like, oh, wow, they do kind of get you hyped by the way they just yell at your face. I mean, I, like, I think this year will be a year where they have a chance to help Mojo kind of, kind yeah. of like sink in and kind of get used just, to him. It's just his gimmick, man. It just kind of annoys me. Yeah, but I mean, it, it, it it's kind of annoys me. It's a it's a good gimmick for like the kids to get behind. I think. Yeah. No. Yeah. That's for sure what it is. All right. So the most let's, armbands. Let Let's beat. move. Let, let's move along because we've there's a lot of stuff uh, that we have kind of we have to talk about still and not a lot of time here. Um, let's quickly talk about Goldberg. Uh, I'm talking, sorry, on uh, Raw Talk, confused yes. with the better show. On, uh, on Raw Talk, Goldberg came out and he essentially said that he's done for now, but then he teased that it's possible that he'll, event, he'll come back one time. And then it was revealed, uh, by Meltzer that, uh, there's a feeling that one day Goldberg will be back, but they do not want it to be until there is a storyline that makes perfect sense. What are your guys' thoughts on the Goldberg situation, and do you think he'll ever be back? Uh, I think I told you this over text that I, I like Goldberg. I just don't like him in world title pictures. Yeah. I don't, I, I, I don't think he'll ever be in the world title picture again. No, no, no. As long as he's not in the world title picture, I have no problem with Goldberg being in the WWE again. Yeah. I have no problem with that. Nate? Just like Gabe said, as long as it's not like a world title match, I'm good with it, but I want to see... Who's next? Like, is it gonna be someone? <laughs> it's gonna be someone big as like Lesnar or someone old school like I don't know, putting him against like somebody like Jericho or like um Kane. You know, like the guys that have been there since Attitude Era. Yeah, that it'll be interesting to see what they bring him back for if he ever comes back. Um, mm-hmm. I think there's not much really to say about the Goldberg situation. I mean, we figured he'd be done after Mania. So uh, yeah. let's move on to somebody who is kind of starting a new after WrestleMania. Uh, to close out Monday Night Raw, we had a return of Finn Balor, who has been out yes. since August with a injury to his shoulder. Um, Finn's back. 
and it doesn't look like he's going to be put immediately in the world ti- the universal title scene. Um, but is Finn Balor back be a good thing for uh, Monday Night Raw? Oh yeah, for sure. That that'll help him a lot, a lot, a lot. I feel like that's what hurt them was him getting hurt. So him being back in the picture, he should be in a world title picture. But the fact that he's just back, it helps them. Yeah. You know we're gonna have good matches with him. Every I mean, week, so. I, I mean, there's always just talk about like who you can push as your next like top guy, like your next face of the company. And I think Finn Balor really fits the mold as someone they can they can get behind and start like making that guy, making him be that guy. I mean, between him and Shinsuke Nakamura, I think those are two of the biggest successes for NXT, and I think they both have the potential to carry their brands respectively this year. And with Joe as a top heel, yeah, that'd be amazing. Nate, what are your thoughts on he- Finn Balor? I'm fucking happy that he's back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I Nate's mean, wearing I've, his Finn Balor paint right now. I've, <laughs> I've been waiting for him to come back for a while, and I know he was like cleared to come back because. He was in the house show recently. He's been in multiple house shows. And, um, and, uh, I'm like, okay, since he's in the house shows, why don't he just come back to the main roster already? And of course, they had to wait till me yeah. to give him a big comeback. I can't blame him for that. Like, that was fucking awesome the way he came back. Mm-hmm. I just think the, um, knowing that he was fine and knowing that he's been at house shows kind of killed the big pop that yeah. you would expect. Mm-hmm. Because it was kind of just, it wasn't like, Oh, is he coming back? Could he come back? It was more just like, all right, what segment is he coming back in? Everybody said it. He was going to come back on uh, Night After Mania. It was kind of just wondering when he's going to come back. I think that's what kind of killed the big pop. Like, he still got a pretty good reaction. He I got like he if, got a nice pop when we first came, when music first hit. Oh yeah, but I think if we had no, imagine if we had no idea. Imagine if he didn't go to those yeah live sure. events and he was he was he was getting off his ring rust at the performance center in yeah. secret. I feel like his reaction would have been crazy because then we wouldn't have known, or if we, we would have had like an idea, like, oh, it might be, uh, this might be a uh, uh, Rollins partner. But the fact that they did the whole thing with like, oh, partners hurt, Who yeah, me again, like they did that again. It's like, all right, yeah. Uh, moving along from one of the better things on Raw to one of the worst things on Raw. Let's talk quickly about Beach Ball City. Uh, <laughs> we started la- that. last year. Uh, me and Gabe were at. The Raw after WrestleMania 32 in Dallas, and there was one beach ball going around. Yes. <laughs> this past Monday on Raw, there were up to five beach balls, <laughs> some saying possibly 20 being tossed around the crowd. What are your guys' thoughts on the beach ball city craze? <laughs> that is ridiculous. <laughs> That's freaking awesome, man. We, ours last year, they got popped by security. Well, there there was actually somebody in the crowd this year that popped a bunch of the balls when he got it, and the crowd just started God. booing him. Dude, didn't Drew say he was going to do that next year? Yeah. <laughs> Bring in, like, a thumbtack and just... <laughs> and dude was just crushing beach balls left and right. Dude, I'd do the same thing. <laughs> Imagine the reaction you'd get. You get that Roman Reigns heat. All right, let's let's go to a, let's go to a little bit more serious of a topic because <laughs> it's fine. Just fine. Throw that in there. Uh, Bray Wyatt versus Randy Orton. Uh, great feud. Oh, no. Terrible match. Was Bray versus Randy a dud at WrestleMania? Yeah. Yes. Uh, it. Uh, I, don't I agree. Know. Like I don't. I, know. It just. What bugged me was that. You had him lose to just one RKO. It's like the Roman Reigns AJ thing again. You have him kick out of Sister Abigail. Well, he doesn't get the kick out of an RKO. Well, Bray actually got hit by two, but the first one was on the outside. Yeah, but Orton got hit by two Sister Abigails and kicked out the second one. Yeah. So it's kind of like I think between that, I didn't really seem to have that great of chemistry, and this the whole projector thing got a little got a little re- redundant and dumb fast. Um, I think for the storyline they built up. This was not the match they should have had, um, and especially with Randy winning. I, I mean, I get it. Randy's a draw. You want to have him as a champion right now. It's a, probably a thank you for him getting his ass kicked by Brock Lesnar. But uh, I would have been a lot more happier if he won in a good match. Yeah, for sure. Because that's what, I think that's why he got booed on SmackDown. Yeah. Nobody, and plus everybody loves Bray. You can't hate Bray. So it's like, yeah. if anybody beats Bray, they're gonna get booed. Like, doesn't matter who you are, you're gonna get booed. So that's the. I think that's the one problem. That was the one thing I was very angry about uh, about Mania about that SmackDown match. But I'm excited for their. What is it? 
uh, House of Horrors match. House of Horrors. Why did that not happen at Mania? <laughs> yeah. Just like Ambrose and Corbin, why was that not a street fight? Because there's a street fight on SmackDown. Yeah. Great. So why the hell is it not a House of Horrors match at Agreed. Mania? It just make, uh, it made sense to make it that match, but I don't even know how it's going to look. Yeah. Um, I all swear right. to God, if it's just the Ambrose Asylum, I'm going to be pissed. All right, well, moving along. Our next segment is uh, we have five topics. I want you to just give quick thoughts on them. It's quick. We're quick draw. Quick draw here. Um, I'm going to tell you a topic. You guys are just going to tell me quick what your thoughts on it. Uh, Chris Jericho this past Monday Night on Raw was attacked before his match uh, where he's supposed to team with Rollins against Owens and Samoa Joe. Apparently, this is the right off TV, and the announced Owens versus Jericho match for payback is presumably not happening, and it looks like the plan is supposed to be Finn Balor versus Owens. Uh, what are your guys' thoughts on Jericho leaving to go on tour of Fozzy? Uh, you gotta do what you gotta do. So, if that's how they have to write him off, then that's just what we gotta deal with. They could have done it better, but if that's what we had to do real quick, then best way to go about it. Mm-hmm. Nate? I, I mean, I didn't like the way they wrote him off. I felt like they could do something else better. Like, to give him a proper send-off instead of, like, you know, fucking having him beaten, have his death, go through a goddamn table. But it gives, uh, it, it gives him a reason for when he comes back to go right after Owens. I mean, it still gives him that, you know, like, strong look, I would say. To go All off. Right. He didn't go off like a bitch. Well, next... Um, but, but at the same time, it was like, hey, new music coming out by Fozzie. Like, shit, <laughs> I'll listen to that. Uh, all right, moving along to I mean, our... I can't say anything. I like Fozzie. Moving along to our next quick draw topic. Uh, this past uh, Tuesday night on SmackDown, one of the debuts was the perfect 10, Ty Dillinger. What are your guys' thoughts on Ty Dillinger coming up to SmackDown Live? We did it first, and it's great. I'm happy. Nate? <laughs> 10. Perfect 10. All right, that's all you need to say. Uh, <laughs> next quick draw topic. Another debut on SmackDown Live was quite possibly the biggest call of the week. Shinsuke Nakamura, what are your thoughts on Nakamura being on SmackDown Live? It's perfect. Like, you can't get any more perfect than him being on SmackDown. He, that's where he needs to be. Much better than Raw. Mm-hmm. Nate? Wrong reference, but it was glorious. <laughs> hey, hey, too soon, man. Too soon. <laughs> Copyright <laughs> infringement. Hey, but you know, but you know, it's going to be a matter of time when he shows up. Mm-hmm. Why'd you say his name like that when he when shows he up? Shows up. No, that son of a bitch, Bobby, All right. when he shows up. Well, mo- mo- moving along to our next quick draw topic. Uh, DDP. This past week, uh, DDP appeared on an ESPN radio show, the da- uh, the Dan Lebetard show with uh, oh, Dan Lebetard. DDP show. Uh, DDP was asked about his feud, with his real-life feud of Scott Snyder and Ric Flair. His response his anger, it angered him. His response was, hey, monkey, listen here. Do you know who the hell you're talking to? And he proceeded on a PG show to start yelling, shut the fuck up, shut the fuck up, fuck you. And then they cut him off right in the middle of the interview. What are your thoughts on Positively Paige going off on a radio host? Wait, what? Wait, hold on. What the fuck this happened? did this happen? Two days ago. What the fuck? I had no idea about this. What are your thoughts on it? Dude, he won the Hall of Fame ring. Now he thinks he's the fucking man. That's great. <laughs> Nate? <laughs> Dude, uh, uh, hats off. Shut Shit, the fuck up. Here. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> All right, well, our final quick draw topic here. Uh, John Cena and Nikki Bella defeated The Miz and Maurice at WrestleMania and uh, proceeded done. to get engaged. And it's now been announced that Nikki will be taking an extended amount of time off due to her neck injury. And John Cena will be taking time off until, at, at the earliest, SummerSlam to film two movies and his TV show. What are your guys' thoughts on the immediately... Sorry, the immediate departure of... Deleted. <laughs> the immediate departure of John Cena and Nikki Bella right after WrestleMania won't affect anybody. Are you un- are, are you fine with the fact that they didn't appear on SmackDown to give a goodbye? Uh, yeah, they're they're fine. SmackDown will be fine without them. They'll be fine without SmackDown. Nate, it's, it's not needed. Kind of sad, you know. <laughs> I got Bella's you know, coming. Cena's gone for a little while. He's making moves. <laughs> <laughs> and Nikki, she's gone because she's playing a fucking wedding. He sounds All like right. he's talking about an ex-girlfriend that's doing great in life. <laughs> I she's mean, doing fine. I'm missing <laughs> the only thing I, really I wish I was miss, with her. The only thing I'm really going to miss out of Nikki is her boobs. <laughs> <laughs> you sure, John? What about here, John Cena? Here, miss here, come, here come all the feminists at Nate now. She's not just uh, an item. She's a human being. <laughs> strong, a fearless human being. Alright, well, uh, fearless. moving along, we got, <laughs> moving, moving along, we have three more topics to get through here. 
yesterday it was announced that Simon Gott, the Vaude Villains, had uh, been granted his release from WWE. And then today it's been announced that apparently Aiden English is going to receive a push out of this. Not a major push, but it's going to be a singles push that will get him on TV more than he was with the Vaude Villains. What are you guys' thoughts on Simon Gotts leaving and Aiden English all of a sudden getting a push because of this? Good. I just hope he's not a jobber. I hope that's not what they mean by getting on TV more. Mm-hmm. I hope it's actually in segments and actually doing something. Nate? But we'll just have to wait and see. Nate, anything? I mean, you guys know me. I never fucking liked them. <laughs> <laughs> and... I don't hear that one is one one of them are gone or both of them are gone. I'm just not gonna like them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Damn. All right, well, there's not much really to say about guys who aren't on TV, but you know, it's uh, it'll be interesting to see what to do with Aiden English, I guess. Uh, moving along, uh, this past week on 205 Live, uh, various members of the UK tournament appeared on the stage and it was announced that during the UK tour, they will be filming matches for an upcoming UK television show that will be appearing on the WWE Network exclusively. Uh, what are your thoughts on the UK show that's coming up and with the signings of guys like Pete Dunne, Drew Galloway, and Tyler Bate? I want to see Pete Dunne kill everybody. <laughs> and I want to see Tyler Bate wave to everybody. <laughs> sure. And I want to live on Mustache Mountain. <laughs> I don't mean it like that, but you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Nate? Uh... <laughs> he loves mustaches. I mean, I don't know how I really react to that, except for the fact that finally UK is going to have their own show. Yeah. Ever oh, since the whole hard. tournament. Yeah, I've been mm-hmm. waiting forever. I feel like that tournament happened a long-ass time ago. It only, so ha- it's like, it only it's happened had, in, like, it's like October or November. Thing. Thank God. Oh, no, it happened in January. Yeah. So it happened, like, four months ago. Fuck. Well, moving along to the final topic today before we wrap up today's episode... Uh, the next pay-per-view coming up is on April 30th. It's Payback, a Raw exclusive show. The rumored card right now, it looks like it's going to possibly be uh, Seth Rollins versus Samoa Joe in some type of match. I'm not sure if it'll be a normal match or not. It looks like we're going to get either Kevin Owens versus Chris Jericho or Kevin Owens versus Finn Balor. It also looks like we're possibly going to get um, Roman Reigns versus Braun Strowman in a number of contenders match. And also, two matches already confirmed for the card are the Hardys versus Sheamus and Cesaro and Austin Aries versus Neville. What are your guys' thoughts on the upcoming Payback pay-per-view, and are there any other matches that you guys think should be on this card? Nah, I feel like they filled out what they need to and end storylines that need to be ended. I think Aries has taken it mm-hmm. in uh, the Cruiserweight match. And yeah, I feel like they just need to tie up the loose ends that they got. I feel like that's just all that pay-per-view is going to It's just going to be a blow-off pay-per-view. Mm-hmm. So, it'll be eh. Neat. It's just gonna, you know, gonna be just at a past time. I mean, I, I mean, I agree with you guys, but my also my other thoughts are we have trades coming up this week, and that could put a plot hole in every single payback plan that's supposed to happen. That could change everything, especially but... with guys like Sheamus and Cesaro already being number contenders for a tag title. I mean, it's it's not saying it's gonna happen, but Sheamus and Cesaro could be traded to SmackDown. The Hardys could be traded to SmackDown. Roman could be traded to SmackDown. Braun could be traded. Could change. Kevin Owens, Finn Balor, Jericho, Rollins, everybody on the card could get traded. Yeah, which I think it's a shame because I mean, matches like Rollins versus Joe is something that kind of needs to happen. So yeah. I I mean I don't know like. I mean, the rumor is there's going to be, like, one big trade that trades, like, two big-name guys. I, mm-hmm. I mean, I'd assume one of them is AJ Styles. And, uh, I mean, I don't know how you can have this payback card continue with, like, your plans you had, yet one of these guys are going to be traded, whether it be Rollins or Roman Reigns or anybody else. I do love how Samoa Joe injured Seth Rollins, but Seth Rollins comes back like, I hate you still, Triple H. <laughs> no, forget about I hate you. It's your fault. <laughs> mm-hmm. Is that they I don't know why they're not feuding right now. Yeah. Well going into payback. Uh pay- honestly the pay per view payback makes sense. Yeah. I mean, I assume that Rollins versus Joe is probably gonna happen at payback unless mm-hmm. one of them are to be traded. I I mean if is I, it payback in like two weeks? It's uh three weeks, April thirtieth. Three weeks? Okay. I mean, if anybody gets traded, um, it's probably going to be Seth Rollins, to be honest. Yeah. But, uh, I, uh, I don't know. This, this, this shake-up kind of just 
thwarts everything that we thought was going to happen. Because yeah. we were all under the assumption that we were going to be getting a new stable, Triple H and all them. Which, it still could be the case, but that just means that guys like Owens, Joe, Rollins, and all them, they can't be traded. Which is a hard thing to do if you're doing this whole thing. Honestly, it would have been cool if Corbin won the, the IC title on SmackDown and got traded to Raw and took Owens' spot in that team. Mm-hmm. So it was like, that would have been cool. Yeah. Well, Two badass brawlers. Anyways, Payback looks like it's going to be a blow-off pay-per-view, like every post-Mania pay-per-view is. Uh, that's all of today's topics. That's uh, mostly everything that's happened this week in wrestling. Uh, next week, we'll be back, and we'll presumably be talking about the results from the Superstar Shake-Up, and the next week's uh, fall- the fallout from the post-Mania episodes of Raw and SmackDown. Uh, yes. I am... Chetterfield will be on the show. <laughs> <laughs> For AC the God, Gabriel Donovan, and Anderson Hayes, Everybody have a beautiful week, and we will see you next time.